We're joined today on the bridge by Don, and I, I hope I get this right, Richard? Yes! Is it <laughs> three, right? It's Richard, not Richard. It's Richard. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's Richard. Run that by me again. It's Richard. Okay, all right. Because I saw the pronunciation R-E-E. -E. In, in it's some it's of easier for people to see it that way. Yeah, Richard, it's French. So my middle name is Angelique, which is, again, French as well. My father is Haitian and Creole. So people who are not from the South or Haiti, they never get it right. <laughs> yeah. So that's, never. I'm trying. I think that's No, you're perfect. Right you're there. perfect. So congratulations on Second Line and Electro. Thank Rebel. you. Absolutely just a fabulous artistic achievement. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I really wanted to, to bring Black women into the forefront of electronic. We've been here, but we haven't really been seen. And I really wanted to prove that as a producer, as an artist, that we, we have a place in, in, the, in the space. So I want to start with just the title itself and second line. And I think that for folks who live in New Orleans or are big New Orleans fans, they probably get it, but there are probably some who don't. So you want to fill us in a little bit. Yeah, so a second line is traditionally done by social clubs in New Orleans. It is a it pays homage to a funeral. So if someone dies, we call it a home gum a home going. There normally is a four pre four to five piece brass band, and they play at the end of the funeral. And they take the sometimes they'll carry the casket, or other times they'll finish the funeral and then take to the streets and celebrate the legacy of someone. And in that celebration, there's footwork, dance, jubilation. It's really a a different view on death. We don't see it as a sorrowful thing. We see it as an opportunity to celebrate life, the legacy that that person has had throughout their life. And uh, I wanted an album that even through COVID, even through the bad or the worst of times, we can still dance in our, our, in our moment and celebrate the death of the old idea of what the artist is and celebrate the life of what's to come. And so that's why the album's called Second Line. And this dancing, there are no steps, there are no rules, there's no choreography. New Orleans doesn't have rules. Yeah, and so you <laughs> kind of wanted to bring that same kind of ethos to the record. Absolutely, you're dead on. Um, we, 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 we go through soul, it's through body, it's what we feel, and that's in our art, that's in our self-expression, that's in, you know, if you go to St. New Orleans and you walk in front of St. Louis Cathedral, you'll see uh, that in front of St. Louis Cathedral, there are tarot card readers. Right. And the church never asked them to leave. Like they just sit there. Right. The idea of that. Right. That in, within Catholicism is paganism. Right. That's New Orleans. Right. You know, the level of just be whatever you choose to be. There is no definition. We won't ask you to be what you want to like. Just live in that moment. And that's the same thing with the way we, we celebrate dance. It's, you know, footwork and the way you choose it to be. But it it feels good. And if it's that kind of rhythm and that kind of sauce is definitely New Orleans. And so you have rejected all genres as an example. Yeah. Well, why do we need them? And I think race sometimes plays a huge part in that, right? They see you see a black artist and immediately you say hip hop R&B as if that's the only things we exist in. So in the very first song, you say, I am the genre. So, you know, it's, I think that lets everybody know. But I do want to mention that you have mentioned electro pop and Afrofuturism. So... Among all of the genres that you embrace, are those your favorites? Uh, is it just because people have such a need for titles and and yeah, labels? that's the truth. Of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think people need to box it, and if they do, I would rather help them. I mean, I originally called the album uh, a, sec a second line an electoral revival because I was trying to give them exactly how I saw sonically the album to be. It, a revival comes from church, from soul. When you think of a revival, you think of a celebration, a jubilation within the church element. That's the soul, right? And then electro is the infusion of the percussion and the cho cho choices of synth and Afrofuturism. However, because there is a le like a people can't deal with genre or bending. They, they have to box you. I chose, I think the smartest play I could do is with what the combination of music that I have used in production. I thought electronic was the smartest uh, to fit into that mold because it was just so many elements. But sonically, we used a lot of pads, a lot of synth uh, within the production that I think felt more per perfect there than it did in R&B or alternative or, you know, someplace else, right? So Though I wish I could just have Electro Revival be the genre on iTunes or anywhere else, or I could just put Dawn, you know, that would be great. But that's not realistic. We have to, you know, we have to put ourselves somewhere. And that's what I thought the smartest play was. You know, we, we it's clear that New Orleans is at the center of this record. Uh, and it's also clear that 
you know, you are telling this New Orleans story through family. And your last record, you were inspired by your dad, who was in the band Chocolate Milk. Mm-hmm. And this time around, it's like it's inspired by your mom. Did she know that she was at the heart of this record? Not at first. Not at first. You know, we were kind of stuck in COVID, and I was helping her out. She had got a knee replacement, and I was going to be the nurse, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the home nurse. And then COVID happened. Yeah. So then, uh, so then I became 15 all over again, right? In my in my house with my parents with rules and everything. Yeah. And I think as we were stuck kind of in the house, I started asking her questions, and the more she would answer it, the more I was like, man, this is I, I never knew my mom beyond a mother. I, you know, like what w- she was before a mother, right? And I realized more and more her story kind of dictated what I was, how I became the survivor that I've become. And I realized a lot of, like when I think of a king and a woman, my mom is that example based off just the story she was telling me and how she saw the world. She's a very Southern Louisiana woman. And I thought it would be really beautiful for her to be the narrator. So she did not know that that was gonna be the the beat until she heard the album. It was like, oh, I'm here. <laughs> She's the spine. She's just sort of She's woven through. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, the, the answer to our family too. She's the spine of our family too. And my grandmother was that guy, rest her soul, when she was alive, my mom's mom. Um, so it makes it makes sense that she be the general. The, I call it the grand marshal. Like when you think of a parade, right? In New Orleans, the grand marshal leads the parades. My mom is the grand marshal of this of this project. So your mom is the spine, but you are also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you're, a a character. Yeah, King Creole. Yes. And so, and I, so the, the, just the use of the word King has to be very intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that it's important that women and men decide to give themselves their titles, right? Because I think throughout time, society tends to say, you look like this, you deserve this title. They give it to you. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being self-proclaimed, right? I think you can decide what you want to be. I've had a very male heavy uh, um, dictatorship type career where a lot of the men have been (laughs) interesting in my journey. Okay. And, 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 Quite, you know, and, and, and that's the times kindest before. thing. That's the kindest way I've ever right. heard anybody. Because, say. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm grateful for the opportunity, right? But I don't want to get, get lost in the fact that it was there were not great times either, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was a woman, a black woman at times too, and so a lot of times I'd have to step up to the plate and be like, I'm just as much as of a deserving to be here as you are, and the king ethos came from that. Like I had to be in the room and be the king so that I would be respected heard, understood as a writer, as a producer, as an animator, as every time it's constantly proving. And I felt like, you know, I don't belittle myself into thinking, because even the title king, right, there is a hierarchy. You can be a queen, but then there'll always be that one above you, right? Why can't you just be that absolute thing? And I find it very funny when I do put the title in front of me, the uncomfortability that it brings to a male most times. Like, why are you calling yourself? I don't get that. You know, like it's uncomfortable for them. And I think that that's a uh, that's a true thing in life. And because of that, I I go back to my mom and my the women in my life. They have always been the high art, the high on the totem. They've, there, there has been no one above them when they, when the family needs to rally, when they need to, when we need things need to be happening within the, 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 like the entire like line of our family, the women are most times the ones that control it. So uh, they're the kings of the family. And so it didn't make any, like, it didn't make me feel any kind of way to say, no, King Creole is a king. A woman's a king. You know, it's so funny to me that, you know, if a man is asking you about the use of the word king because Mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable, the fact that he is uncomfortable is in fact the answer to the question. <laughs> there you go. And and it's wild because I never thought that to be the case. You know, like I I pre- appreciate men, men's opinions, women's. I love the the conversation and the dialogue. I came into this art and this music business with the hope that I could be many things. My journey and my trajectory has caused me to have a whole different outlook on a lot of things. And so with King Creole, she represents this album in a really interesting way because I was built by a machine, right? I started with an algorithm. I was pop culture at its finest, a reality television show on Bad Boy with a a girl group that was emulating the Spice Girls. Like that was as bubblegum, you know, manufactured as you could be. And, 
you know, that part of the album represents that machine, that algorithm, right? So the Android part of King Creole is the first half of the album, the vocorder, the vibe. And then the second half is the human side, the DIY, the, the independent side that makes a lot of mistakes. I uh, didn't know, you know, like I had to navigate as an indie DIY person that was went from 5,000 seaters to 200 seaters, you know, and figuring it out. And that part of the album, the, the second half after the intermission is the human side. And that's the embodiment of King Creole, the representation of me being both mainstream and indie. We're speaking with Don Richard, who has a new album out, Second Line and Electro Revival. It's on Merge. You were an independent artist for so long, and that came after what you were talking about. And of course, if, if people aren't quite connecting it, 2005, Making the Band, you became a member of Danity Kane. And then following that, you went on to partner with Diddy and do Diddy's Dirty Money. And follow, and, and, and I know that you love that project. I loved you both. Loved yeah, I loved both. They were a part of who I was, yeah. And we could talk a long time about those experiences because I'm, it's just like, holy cow, right? There's got to be 4,000 stories. But the thing that I think is really particular to you that I think is so interesting is there are a lot of people who have gone through reality music television shows. And you know the music industry, you know what it's like. It either hits big or it, it doesn't hit quite big enough, or it doesn't hit at all. And unless you just hit it out of the park, it ends. Yeah. Then the people that are have been a part of this, you know, machine um, that that I think you earlier phrased as, as being interesting, or interesting. <laughs> um, you know, uh, th there's a certain kind of clinging on to that that most people do as things just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. You just sort of said, okay, fine, start over. I'm independent. And you became, and I don't know how intentional this was, but it seemed to me from the outside looking in that you just set out to be an artist at that point. That was always what I wanted to be. So always, I mean, my father was that. Like my dad has a, a master's in music and music theory that I've always just wanted to be an artist. I never, I never, if you look at the TV show, I was always the shy one. I always just loved the art. It was always that I wanted to be a writer, a producer. I wanted to see how far I could take it. That's who we are here in New Orleans as artists, period. We love it. Like we love this thing. Our city is this, we like, we breathe, like breathe it. It's we go outside and it's art everywhere. So it's not something that's like, oh, I want to be famous. I didn't get in the line to be famous. I got in the line because that was the only opportunity I had coming from the South at the time. Nobody was coming to New Orleans and no pop artists were coming out of New Orleans. We had rappers and jazz artists. We didn't have like an opportunity to be a dancer and a singer and be in like pop culture. That, that wasn't something for a black girl's dreams in New Orleans. So that was my only ticket. You know, the thing that's really crazy is your your desire to be an artist didn't stop with music. And I, I love the fact that, you know, labels, whatever, nerd, geek, whatever, you know, we're, <laughs> we're both there. We're both there. And, I'm proud of that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And you were a total anime fan. You were a yeah. kid. And I can only imagine, like, you actually got signed to work with adults swim and create shows. it's just like that's unbelievable that is so cool the kid in me is so ecstatic every day that I get to create with them I started in 2015 with them I mean I grew up loving Akira Bleach like those were like huge for me growing up um, Dragon Ball Z and then to be able to not only first I started being a part of their singles program then I started animating with them and then I said I want to have a bigger part out of it. So now I became a creative consultant where I bring other animators in to create commercials and content for them. It has been a beautiful ride with them and I'm still going. And at the still heart going. of that reaching out and getting other animators, it's all about diversity and inclusion, yeah. specifically around queer and black animators. Yeah, and that's a, that's a place that we haven't got a lot of respect or being seen again. Again, in places where the others tend to be marginalized, that's the voice of my music, my art, my my brand. Like, I want to create a space that we don't normally get those spaces. And for me, it it took me being a musician to get adults from to say, okay, we'll rock with you. I had to go through a corner of a door of an alley, you know what I mean? Like, which is my entire career. It's like, 
beating down doors and going underneath things to try to get there. And that helped me. And I just want to make it a little bit easier because my road was not paved. It has been a hell of a ride. Like I have had to fight tooth and nail for every opportunity. So I want to create a, you know, an easier way for these animators to come. And it has been really great. It's been a year and a half now where I've been a creative consultant and I've had over 30 different black queer or women uh, animators that have come into Adult Swim. And you've married all of this. You've brought in a Nigerian anime house uh, yep. to work on a trailer for uh, King Creole. For Adult yeah, Swim. yeah, nerd, and they're called Lotus Animation, and it's a really beautiful. Lotus Animation is one of the only animated animated house like production companies that provide computers and stuff in a space that they don't have that. So they're creating, you know, incredible animators in a place that has been severely hurt, tainted, uh, where they can't even afford books and they're giving them computers to create and animate. It is so cool to watch. So shout out to Lotus Animation, a really great, really great uh, production house. So, you know, um, not that you're not already cool enough after all this, <laughs> But you also have your own vegan food truck, which is just, yeah. you know. Uh. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's and it's it's wild because it still stays true to the to the message, right? So in New Orleans, veganism is fairly new. My father was diagnosed with lymphoma, um, and he and I went vegan together to try to help him through his process, and it changed his life. It changed mine, and I just stayed. I'm now six and a half years vegan, wow. but I already knew that I wanted to create a collective hub in New Orleans. I never thought I'd do food, never, yeah. um, but the veganism, what I found is most artists don't eat well. We eat horribly. We have horrible hours. We, we don't have anything good around us. It's like we just grab things, you know? Um, so I created an eco-friendly, sustainable experience where not only do you get vegan biscuit sandwiches, uh, the, uh, organic snowballs, which is a very New Orleans thing, but you also have DJs spinning on repurposed wood. Our uh, packaging is biodegradable and recyclable. And our artists, plant, our artists come in, our, our house resident uh, artists come in and they paint with plant-based paint. That's fabulous. Yeah, so it's the first of its kind in New Orleans. And if people want to like check it out, it's Papa Ted's. Papa Ted's Truck, uh, at P-A-P-A-T-E-D-S-T-R-U-C-K. Papa Ted's Truck and Papa Ted's dot, uh, truck dot com. Come check us out. We're a pop-up and we're all over the city in New Orleans. So if you're in New Orleans, come get a free meal on me. Well, this is just fabulous. You know, um, I have to say, speaking with Don Richard and the new album, Second Line, an Electro Revival. And I, I hope that the one thing that people come away from this interview with is so much of the music that we have today is like made by a factory. Um, and this is not that. And there is an artistic vision here. And the, um, the attention that you're receiving on this project is something that you probably deserved a very long time ago. And so I'm really happy for you. And Thank I really you. hope that people will investigate your work. Not that every project is worth, you know, it, not that every project works for everybody, but we should all seek out the ones where there's an artistic vision in place and somebody who works really hard, uh, sacrificing along the way to, to realize that. And, and you are that. Thank you. You will never know what that means to me. Like, if you know my story, you know about my homelessness and then coming to this journey, like losing everything in Katrina to now this moment in my life. Like, those are the words as an artist you fight for is they don't all have to be good words. But if you feel something, if I can make people see something new, um, then I've done my job. Thank you for those words, because that means everything to me. And, you, you know, you'll be shaking the floorboards in my house. My wife is a, yes. is a dancer. and uh, <laughs> I love her already. <laughs> She's fabulous. Don Richard, Second Line and Electro Revival. It is out now on Merge. Thanks so much for spending time. Thank you time. for your patience and, and being good with me with this tech. <laughs> <laughs> it's our pleasure. Trust me. Until next time. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.